Jeff Brooks, rock star. Now that's a title I could aspire to. Faster now. Faster. Yeah, that's Bill. All right. Now this one's called Morbid Crucifixion. One, two, three, four. Although I was beginning to suspect that demonic possession weren't my ticket to fame. See, a title defines your place in society, like, say, garbage collector. This is more than just a couple of words, it's an identity. But how do you reckon that garbage collector felt when they replaced him with a mechanical arm? I'll tell you how he felt. He felt like someone gave his face a good whack with a large, painful object that really hurt. Hey, pizza! Hey, pizza. Hey. Hey. They're out back. Thanks, mate. <laughs> Yeah, that's me, mate. Listen. Oi, what's the eggs, mate? We had pizza an hour ago, mate. Ah. Well, can you check, see if anybody ordered anything else? Yeah, no worries. Anybody order any more pizza? Hi. Hey, you guys. <laughs> Told you to get down from there. Pizza, anyone? Pizza, anyone? Anyone? <laughs> Okay, who's responsible? There's egg on my car that wasn't there when I parked it. <laughs> you turds too gutless to own up. <laughs> if any of you had any balls, you'd admit it to my face. <laughs> yep, I was far from happy with my place in society. So I decided to isolate the problem and destroy it. When I realised that the problem was, in fact, my entire life, I decided to try something else. I give my band one last chance. One, two, three, four. This one is Angel of Death. One, two, three, four. This one is called Demon Deity. One, two, three, four. It was time to say goodbye to my satanic friends and take control of my life. And I'd just forget that I was still a pizza boy. G'day, Mr. Kent. You order a large supreme? Morning, Jacob. Great, you're back. Listen, do you mind taking over for a while? I've got to be somewhere. Funny, yesterday I was making your coffee. Now I'm doing your job. You have faith? I mean, the talent spotting business is easy. Just remember, if it sucks, <laughs> you chucks. Let me guess, you're off to your... Men's support group. And please, don't start on with the whole feminist thing again. Let me just say one thing. Men may think we're all equal, but it's bullshit. Where's Jacob? He's ducked out. Shit! <sighs> well, do you know how he's going with the demo tapes? Not very well. They all pretty much suck. Oh, damn. I got a presentation for the big bosses. Are you busy? Well, Trudy Gilbert, great to see you here. 
You have to excuse me if I'm a little bit tense. I've uh, just gone cold turkey after ten years of chain smoking. Stan, I'm trying to care, but it's just not working. Just tell us how you plan to spend our money. OK. This circle here represents your money. What we're doing is putting 90% into a commercial music venture and 10% into an alternative music venture. Now, for the commercial music venture, we've created a boy band called... Urban Edge. <laughs> now, the reason we've put so much money into Urban Edge is because, well, making a boy band and hitting is uh, pretty much like shooting cats in a barrel. Only a lot more fun. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Now, for the other 10%, we are going for a less formulaic alternative sort of band. Uh, now, I'm not really into the angst-ridden, long-haired posing type of thing, but, hell, if there's money in cockroach farming, <laughs> I'll be knee-deep in the sons of bitches. <laughs> Tell us why that 10% isn't being wasted. Right. Tell her names. What? Uh, tell Trudy what you told me before about the great demo tapes you've been listening to. Right. Yes. Well, we have a tremendous choice of alternative bands. Tremendous. So, uh, finding the next big hit shouldn't be a problem. <laughs> there's, there's one song in particular they wrote, that dogs are the best people. And, uh, and we like dogs. Yeah. I love dogs. I've got a great dog. And, um, Rock on. We're Lena's box. Rage. 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 Okay, see you tomorrow. Okay, bye. Hey, Kath. Mm hmm. Do you ever feel like you're being punished? <laughs> no. Oh, I forgot who I was talking to. And all the time we've been friends, I haven't caught you sinning once. You're not exactly Charles Manson yourself, Jeff. Yeah, I know, but I'm starting to wonder if it's all the little things you're adding up against me. Like in grade five, I stole a pack of whiz fizz from this girl in my class. I take it back. You're going to hell. <laughs> it's funny to think that she's probably a lawyer now or overseas with the rest of my devoted friends. Bastard. Look, Jeff, you need to unwind. One of these days, I'm taking you out dancing. Oh, no, 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 no. Last time I went dancing, everybody thought I was a, a comic performance artist. They started throwing coins at me, which is okay, until they started throwing the cash registers, too. Oh, look, Jeff, why don't you come to yoga with me? It'll help you to relax. Perfect. Then I'd at last be at peace with my failure. Come on, Jeff. You are a kick-ass drummer. You'll find a decent band soon enough. Just keep channeling your energy in the right direction and remember, when something gets you down, everything happens for a reason. Uh, the problem is that all these bands are just shit. You know my standard unit of grooviness? The uh, Millie Hendrix. Yeah. None of these bands exceed 600. Like the Wallies, their sense of rhythm was surpassed only by their dedication. Tell me, baby, are you really mine? Don't leave me hanging on the line. Whoa, footy's on. Got to go. My or oral odyssey. Unconventional, gone. yet gone. fucked. Gone. 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 Who is this wasted man naked on my futon? Then, there was Paper Cut Party. I'm telling you, Kath, if I don't find a band soon, I'm gonna have to work for my dad. I am a refugee of love. Hello and welcome back. Sonia, you're in the lead by five with Michael dangerously close at 65 Hello? points. Hello? What is Hello, the Jeff. city of Italy? Sonia. Rome. Rome. Rome is correct. And now it's time for our famous faces. And tonight's home viewer is Gordon Willoughby from Duff's Creek in Victoria. I want to be the home viewer one day. Go for it, Daniel. Dare to dream. Hello? Hi, Jeff. So how is everybody? Dan, how's school? Boring. You should play drums for your grandfather. He needs some excitement in his life. I think what your father's trying to say is, I think your drumming's marvellous. Thanks, Grandpa. 
You're a real wizard with the sticks. How's work going? Yeah. You must use a lot of fuel. Have you thought any more about my offer? Dad, I don't want to be an administration assistant. Let me know by March. Now you're in front line five. Who crowned himself the Emperor of France in Michael? Napoleon. Napoleon. We'll accept Napoleon. See, Dan, school is useful. I learned that from Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Dick brain. Where's Jacob? He's gone out. Jesus! Again? But what are you doing? He asked me to fill in for him. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I employed you as Jacob's assistant. That's right. And you can handle the workload of two people? Yep. See? Ah, oh, speak of the dead. Hey, Stan! Pack up your shit and get out, you slack bastard! I refuse to employ anyone who abuses my payroll! Even if the Pope and his dirt kissing fat ass would have walked in here late twice in a row the early before he could say, Jesus fucking Christ! Well, can I grab my CDs? Oh, oh these are your CDs, are they? OK. Here, take your fucking CDs and take them down to Casca Murders and slum for a sense of punctuality, you cock smoking piece of rat face! Piss off! <laughs> right. Naomi. How about promotion to talent spotter? Yo, I'm MC Killer, now warm the mic. So grab a fly girl and squeeze her booty tight. Don't be dissing, my mission to rock the house. Cause your honey dip lips are nibble like a mouse on a mission. On a mission. On a mission. On a mission. On a mission to rock the house. On a mission. On a mission. On a mission. On a mission. On a mission to rock the house, boy. Hello, Jeff here. Hey, Jeff. Hey, Kath, how's it going? Well, let's just say they should do Beastie Boys covers and call themselves the Obesity Boys. <laughs> Shit. I've got to go. See ya. Obesity Boys, eh? Well, I was just kidding. Having a joke. Nice. Well, I've never been into the whole black jelly bean scene myself. No, I meant your idea. The obesity boys? <laughs> Shit, yeah. Until Ascot becomes prime crack dealing territory. We're pretty light on street cred. <laughs> <laughs> so, are you in? Huh? You're fat enough. Be an obesity boy. Hey, ladies! Get! Get funky! So I'd reached the crossroads. I had a choice between a dead-end job, a metabolically challenged cover group, or absolute desperation. I chose the latter. Jesus, mate, are you all right? <laughs> yeah, man, I'm fine. Oh, not too damaged. They won't even notice. Sorry, mate, I'll get out of your way. This may sound kind of dicky, but do you need a drummer? Now, for your listening pleasure, we'd like to perform some uh, traditional nursery rhymes done death metal style. Humpty Dumpty sat on a wall. Humpty Dumpty had a great fall. Die, Humpty, die! You're fucking whacked. I reckon we did all right. 
Although I spent most of my time making sure that bloody kid didn't throw us a stale cheeseburger. If they're throwing food, it's got to be fresh. <laughs> hey, I've got an old four-track recorder at home. We could maybe cut a demo? What if you steal my riffs? Mate, I'm a drummer. Sounds catchy, but I'm not sure how we'd play it unplugged. <laughs> That's your ambition, is it? To play unplugged? Well, if I look back over my life on my deathbed, having played unplugged, I'd be happy, yes. Well, apart from the fact that I'd be on my deathbed. You're seriously telling me that Genghis Can't is a really cool name for a band. <laughs> well, no one else has a better idea. The fuck nuts? The bleeding hearts. Abraham the goldfish. <laughs> Walrus man. Skivvy. The arse bandits. Here's an idea. Three people each write a word down on a piece of paper, which I will combine to form the name of your band. Jeff. Put. And mirror. What sort of word? Anything. First thing that pops into your head. <laughs> Pussy. <laughs> Good. You're special. You get to write the second word that pops into your head. Beer. <laughs> You're disqualified. <laughs> That's plenty of time. Hand your papers in. Kath, your board is wrong. Yep. So, if we're not meant to eat animals, why are they made of meat? <laughs> All right, everyone, the name of your band is Pulsating Nut Floss. What kind of fucked up name is that? Jeff, you're in no position to talk after your suggestion. What's wrong with the poo people? I've got an idea. Remember, just three words and then pass it on. And then we'll end up with a crazy story. And from it, we'll choose a catchy name. <laughs> Is this going to work? <laughs> sure. We did it at school. About a gerbil who was teased in his youth, but went on to run a McDonald's franchise from the Hamburglar's ass. So what's our name? Stamp Collector. Stamp Collector? As a name for our band? How could anybody say we're cool? Would we say it's irony? We only collect stamps in rehab? I think you need a name with texture and meaning, like... Spud Monkey. Where'd you get that? <laughs> blah, blah, blah. Bacon-sniffing porcupine essence, which entangled its spikes around an alien spud. Monkey brain... Spud super... Monkey. <laughs> <laughs> It kind of has texture. <laughs> Can we pretend it has meaning? <laughs> we'll think of something. Blah, 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 blah. Where's the U word? Oh. Well, no, unfortunately, today. Uh, instead, it's the evil twin we regret to inform you. Well, when we're accepting our award at the Aris, we can always say, I'd like to say a big fuck you to Pinnacle Records for not signing us up. What's the award for? Best band that nobody likes. Yeah, you're right. We'll never get anywhere because we don't know anyone in the industry. Remember, guys, you haven't failed until you stop trying. What's your secret, Kathy? How do you stay so optimistic? Well, I'll tell you what I tell my students when I'm teaching yoga. When you're driving through peak hour traffic, imagine that no one's competing to get there first. Instead, you're all driving for the same team, working together like bees. That'll help you to have compassion. Oh, compassion's easy. Don't worry, Pinnacle Records. It's not your fault you're a bunch of dick smackers. You both need to make a pact. You need to have something you swear to do when you make it big that you wouldn't ordinarily do, like running down the street dancing. That'll give you a positive direction for your emotions. 
Well, I'd like to burn my pizza shirt. Yeah, it's bad for the environment, but maybe just this once. Alex? I'd like to laugh in someone's face. <laughs> what, just anyone? No. I've got someone in mind. Naomi, can you come in here, please? <clears throat> Trent, look, a formula is your friend, all right? Do you think McDonald's would make Big Macs differently for every customer? Hmm? Naomi. Hi, Stan. Yeah. Look, Trent and the boys want to sing their own lyrics. OK, so is this a bad thing? We'll have a listen. Melancholy baby, you're an angel to me, girl. Melancholy baby, ooh, you're, you're the You're not doing it any justice. It's... Melancholy baby, you're an angel to me, girl. Look, mate, I don't care if you're fucking Pavarotti. Girls like it happy, all right? You may as well be singing Suicidal Whore or Fuck You Up. No, but this is a song about love. This is a song about a girl who's a little messed up, but in the end she hey, finds... Hey, will you tell Trent and the boys that Melancholy Baby is not going to sell? Yes, Stan, I agree. Melancholy Baby does not sound as lovey-dovey as is meant to. Mum, Dad, Daniel, this is Alex. Alex, this is Mum, Dad, Daniel and Grandpa. Hi, Alex. Good day. OK, listen to this. Um, where's the toilet? So, down the hallway. Well, your Ming Dynasty tape player isn't exactly doing it justice, but you get the idea? Well, I don't listen to pop music, so I'm not qualified to comment. You can tell if it sounds good. I think it sucks. Daniel, don't be rude. Mum? It sounds nice. Thank you. Is that what you're going to put on the radio? What do you mean? Well, it sounds a bit muffled, that's all. <laughs> it's just a demo. It'll be recorded properly when we're signed. It's a great rhythm, Jeff. He sounds like a spastic. And you're too fat and ugly to be a rock star. Got my feet tapping. Thanks, Grandpa. At least somebody's got some taste. So have you heard back from any of the record companies? No bites of the cherry just yet. See, I told you, you can't make money out of music. Will you just stop your business bullshit for once, please, Dad? Jeffrey, what's your language? Daniel. Oh, Jeffrey, do you remember little Naomi Fenton? Yeah. I ran into her mum the other day. Well, I'm very happy for you. Well, apparently Naomi's got a proper job now. See? She's working for a company that's named after an animal with horns. Elm, I think. Elm is a tree. You're thinking of elk. Is an elk a tree or an animal? Animal. Mum, is there any possibility Naomi works at Elk Studios? It could be. Allow me to clarify the situation. If Naomi works at Elk Studios, then she works at a place where we've already sent a demo tape. This could help us get a foot in the door, so please try to remember. It was Elk Studios. Hello, can I speak to Naomi Fenton, please? This is Jeff Brooks here. Certainly, just putting you through. Hello, Naomi Fenton. Hello, Naomi. This is Jeff Brooks. You might remember me from primary school. Jeff Brooks. Yeah, you know. Jeff, Jeff, stinky breath. Oh, yes, Jeff. How could I forget the boy who picked me flowers every day? Yes. Well, look, the reason why I'm calling is that my friend Alex and I sent a demo tape to you uh, under the name of Spud Monkey. Spud Monkey? Yes, I've heard that one. Really? Great! But I'm afraid it's not quite what we're after. Oh. You'll receive a letter in the mail in the coming weeks. Anyway, look, I'm pretty busy, so I've got to go. OK. Good to talk to you again. You too, Jeff. Bye. Thanks. Bye.
Alex, what are you doing? I just need to go and clear my head. Where are you going? There's a place I go when, when everything just gets too much, all right? McDonald's? Never even seen her change positions on the couch. It's just TV, TV, TV all day. You've got a great family, mate. <laughs> Everyone talks to each other. Well, it may not be the Texas Chainsaw Massacre family, but that just comes down to a choice of cutlery. <laughs> I wrote a song once about a guy who used to go and sit by a river when everything got too much for him at home. The character in the song swears that if he ever sees the reflection of his stepdad looking back at him, He'll either drown himself or, or change. Oh, I'd like to hear that sometime. Nah, it's too mellow. It'd be like Marilyn Manson singing crowded house covers. <laughs> <laughs> I'd look like a wuss. <laughs> uh, if my flatmate Kathy were here, she'd say something like, don't stress about what others think, Alex. Just be yourself. And if that means extending your repertoire, then so be it. OK. Let's try plan B on Naomi. Plan B? <laughs> Who are you, the fucking famous five or something? This sucks. You guys suck. I'm not giving you any money, hey, cause you guys, you suck. Although, I'll tell you what I will do. I'll give you a condom for later when you go home, you know. And Make sweet love. Go away. No one likes you. Naomi! Jeff! And you must be, um... Alex. Right. Cunning plan, busking in front of the studio. Well, sometimes you just got to ask yourself, what have we got to lose? Usually it's dignity, but you get used to that. Look, um, I've got to go to work, but uh, I might dig up your demo and have another listen. Great. OK. See ya. Thanks. Use that condom, you pufters. <laughs> choice. Okay, here's the thing. I sacked the sound engineer this morning because he refused to obey instructions. Now, if I recall correctly, you've always wanted to be a sound engineer. Am I right? Yes. Well, I had another listen to your demo tape this morning. And I'm thinking maybe you could record the next Spud Monkey single. What do you say? I'd love to, Stan. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all right. Bring him in. <laughs> Cut the crap, fellas. We're here to do business. Sorry. OK. Here's the thing. You're not a pop dancey boy band, so you're going to have to be pretty bloody good to make any money, all right? OK. Stand up. <clears throat> I'm not going to get out my home proctology kit, fellas. Stand up. Thank you. Now, if I do decide to record you, we'll record a single. If that does any good, then we record an album. OK? OK, you. Look sexy. What do you mean? Look, you may not be a boy band, but I cannot market a horse's ass. Look at Naomi as if you've seen her for the first time. God, what are you, a monk? She's an attractive female. Go on. <laughs> OK, <laughs> perfect. Let's make some music.
One rough mix. I'll just take it next door and give Santa a listen. It is not gonna work. Just trying to have some integrity. Integrity? You take your head out of your ass and take a look at what I'm Hello, Jeff here. Oh, hi, Jeffrey. Oh, hi, Mum. Can I call you back? Oh, it's just that Grandpa's sick and it'd be nice if you came over soon. Yeah, I'll come over soon. You'll soon come back in here. Okay, bye. For a second chance, you will. And I'll tell you what, here's my response now. Get fucked! Yeah, get fucked to you too. He's going to carve our hearts out with a blunt spatula. OK, uh, the treble's a bit high and what else? It's good. Really? Better than good. It's marketable. <laughs> Great. I thought you were going to hate it. <laughs> There's only one problem. Uh, the reverb, I know. It's too heavy. Uh, no, your reverb is beautiful. The problem is this, since the departure of the boy band, there's been a huge gap in our investment structure. <clears throat> the package is due this month, so we've got two weeks to make Spud Monkey commercial. Okay? So, what I want you to do is lay down some keyboard tracks, some backing vocals, replace Jeff's drum with computerised stuff, and it'll go off. <laughs> Hang on a second. You want me to replace Jeff with a computer? Yep. <laughs> That's not fair, Stan. Hey, Jeff's not going anywhere. We need him. We're going to promote him as the mates who made it. Okay, okay. but surely our drummer will detect a uh, slight disturbance in the mix, so to speak. Yes. So I'll get you to keep it a secret until the CD launch. That way it'll be too late for Alex to quit and protest. Oh, come on, Jeff can't complain. He gets to play in all the live gigs. It's good for stage presence. Look, Stan, I understand your commercial viewpoint. I just don't feel comfortable being made to lie. Gnomes, I can easily get a sound engineer in here who's got a proven commercial background. But I like what you did on the last version. So I'm taking a punt on you. Don't throw away your chance on some moralistic protest. I know why you asked me out here today. You feel guilty. About rejecting my flowers in grade seven. Oh, God. The thing I remember about you in grade seven was this argument you had with Mrs. Gibson. It was this homework question. What do you call people with unusual intellectual ability? And you insisted that moron was right. <laughs> moron? Yeah, and I got in trouble because I agree with you. So you stuck up for me? Oh, yes. I've always cheered for the underdog. Hmm. You know what I remember most about you? What? Stationery. Stationery? You always had these cute little pencils and rulers and, and fruit-shaped erasers. Oh, my God, I did too. <laughs> and they were all meant to smell differently, but strangely enough, they all smelt like pineapple. <laughs> and Mr Quinn confiscated my peach one because he said I smelt it too much. <laughs> oh, that guy was a dick. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, it reminded me a lot of my dad. How so? Well, for example, when I was 10, I told my dad I was terrified of nuclear war. He said, don't worry, Jeff, if the bomb hits, we'll all be vaporised instantly. You won't even know what happened. Them's encouraging words. I know, I became paranoid that any second I'd be burning in hell. Mm. That reminds me of this boyfriend I had when I was 16. I once said to him, I'm so ugly. And he said, it's all right, honey, it's personality that counts. Yeah. Oh. And an example of what not to say if he's having a bath and you're there using a hairdryer. <laughs> exactly. From that moment on, I swore I'd become a strong, independent female and not give a shit about men's opinions. And it worked. Now you're a sound engineer and doing what you believe in. 
Okay, now uh, just hang in there for a minute, fellas. I've just got to change some film. <laughs> so what's with the Mr. Happy impersonation? I was just remembering what Naomi said this morning. You know, she remembered something I did in grade seven that I'd totally forgotten. Maybe she had a crush on you. You never realised. Oh, not likely. She's out of my league. Sometimes I look at her and I, I think, if only you had a glass eye, I'd have a better chance. <sighs> Maybe I'll have... More pulling power when I'm a big star. Have you seen the lead singer of The Verve? He's got a bloody car accident on his shoulders. He's got a face like a smash crab, but I bet he's dating models like they're going out of fashion. You reckon that'll make you a better person, do you? Having your face seen by millions. Not better, just more desirable. Hey, look, do me a favour. Why? Don't go chasing Naomi. I've had a crush on her since grade three. Yeah, no worries. Cool. All right. Let's strike a pose. Uh, you're right, Jeff. I've just got to take some shots of Alex here. Get it, mate. Jeff, isn't it? Yeah. Kevin Matthews, manager, Helena's box. Oh, how's it going? Good, good. Listen, I've, uh, I've heard you drumming. I love your work. If you ever consider a, uh, change of scenery, we'd like to hear from you. <laughs> Don't you think your drummer might get a bit miffed? Uh, that's a long story. Uh, he's gone off to Tibet to discover himself. Bloody hippie. Look, mate, Helena's Box are a great band, but uh, I'm pretty happy as is. Sure. You've got my card. You change your mind. Give me a call. OK. <laughs> OK, the video director will be here soon. So the boys and girls of marketing whipped up a few outfits to uh, suit your style of music. Some are kind of, you know, neo-funk, others kind of glam. Here, that's kind of cyberpunk. Come in. Labels are just going to make us date. Yeah, good point. And people look back on cyberpunk like we look back on roller disco. Eves, Jeff, Alex. Let it rip, mate. I've heard your song and I'm very inspired. It's a kind of organic artificial hybrid. I'd say it's close to genius. Ah, what's genius but misdirected insanity? You seem to have a fresh outlook, Jeff. Have you got any ideas? Oh, you don't want to hear them. All my inspiration comes from delivering pizzas and playing computer games. Your experiences may seem trivial to you, but they're all a part of who you are. Come on, let's hear your idea. All right. Well, one day I was delivering pizzas to a toga party.
So, what do you think? Fresh. My thoughts exactly. I mean, this video represents mostly of... Dan, we... put a cork in it for two seconds. Where's the boy band? Ah, uh, well, Spud Monkey had such a unique, dynamic vision that I thought I'd put all the money into them. I mean, in comparison, the boy band are just a bunch of lame-ass softcocks. <laughs> and what exactly have you done with those lame-ass softcocks? I've had them cryogenically frozen. <laughs> <laughs> nah, look, the, the boy band are great, but uh, I really think we're on to a big winner here with the Mighty Spuds. I mean, the drummer even conceives their own videos. How's that for a unique selling point, eh? And as far as sexy goes, I mean, I mean, look at this. Oh, oh, I'll just find a better example. There. Look at that. The face of the future. I'm going to put that face on every magazine cover in every newsstand in the country. I guarantee that Spud Monkey will be the biggest thing in Australia. And if they're not, you better start defrosting. Yeah. <laughs> OK, I've got some good news and I've got some bad news. The good news is we're going to do a huge publicity campaign, saturate the marketplace. The bad news? Uh, let me guess. You want to replace the lead singer, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> no, the bad news is... Well, the bad news is that uh, Trudy and Gilbert, who run this company, are a little concerned about your drumming, Jeff. They won't provide money for a release unless we make the music more commercial. And in their eyes, that means replacing your drums with an electronic beat. I'm sorry. Hey, look, Jeff, it's not that bad, mate. You get to play in all the future recordings, all the live shows. You'll be in all the promotional material, so you'll still get heaps of chicks. Jeff, Jeffrey, I love your drumming. If the bosses weren't the ones with the money, I'd tell them to shove their elder and fair up their asses. Doubt you'd find room with their heads up there already. Naomi, tell Jeff what you told me before. What? About how he's one of the best drummers you've ever worked with and how on future recordings you'll make him sound just as good as a computer. Well, I didn't use those words exactly, but yes, in the future we'll make sure there isn't a problem. This is crazy. I'm not going to let some asshole money people push us around. What's their number? Alex, don't. Sam, Gary, Trudy, here we go. Yeah, go on, go on, call them. Just be aware that uh, they may feel threatened if you question their authority. Hello, Trudy Marsden. Yeah, hello, Trudy. It's Alex, Alex. here. Alex, your voice is intact. Be thankful. It's just for this one song. Right, Nuns? Right. Put the phone down. I know, but it's the imperfections of live drums that give it its soul. I mean, you wouldn't get a computer to play the guitar, would you? Listen, Jeff, right now you've got your foot firmly planted in the door. Remember, the key to happiness is tolerating the things you can't change and changing the things you can't tolerate. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, I, I gotta keep thinking foot in door, foot in door, foot in door. That's the spirit. Hey, Kath, when you come to the CD launch tonight, can you, like, openly pash Lizzie? Why? Cos I've got to look available, because Naomi's coming. Oh, Jeff, you stud muffin. <laughs> and stay away from her.
Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to this momentous occasion. The first Spud Monkey single launch. Hey. OK, now, tomorrow we launch a huge publicity campaign for Spud Monkey. Now, back in the old days, this was a risky business, as a single jealous journalist could put a huge dent in sales. But today, we live in a progressive era, where the man who owns this record company also owns half the newspapers, magazines, TV stations, radio stations and cinemas. Now, this guarantee of good reviews is not only conducive to hard work, but it shields us from the tyranny of slander. Right on, yeah. And this, ladies and gentlemen, is what I call fair play. Yeah. All right, now, have a good time. Knock yourselves out. I hope you all get laid. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Have a good one. Good one. Jeffrey, the man of the moment. Hey. You've made it, mate. You're a star. Yeah. Yeah. Well, where's Naomi? Huh? Uh, I don't know. Hey, listen, I'll be mean to tell you. Hey, the work you did on the video, I loved it. You are a very talented video artist. Stan Eves did all the work. I made a couple of tiny suggestions. Hey, Jeffrey, repeat after me. I, Jeff Brooks. Stan. Come on. I, Jeff Brooks. I, Jeff Brooks. I'm a very talented video artist. I'm a very talented bullshit artist. Oh, come on, mate. Hey. I know it's been hard, but think of it this way, all right? As a video artist, you have transcended the title of musician. You are now a multimedia megastar. Hey, <laughs> Alex, man of the moment. No. Elk is a great company. Jeff, there's something you need to know about this company. I just want you to know that whatever happens, you are a very talented drummer and you should never, ever give up. No. I love you. <laughs> and now I must vomit. Hey, Naomi. What's wrong? I don't know. I. I just feel so guilty about what's happening to Jeff. Yeah, I know. I, I do too. You've got no reason to feel guilty. I felt like I could have done more to help him. Alex, there's nothing you could have done. Nothing at all. I could have threatened to leave the band. <laughs> Look, it's the boss's decision. They have the money, so they have the power. Simple as that. You either go with it, or you pack your bags and go home. Yeah, I know. I know all of that. Jesus. What? I'm such a pseudo. I'm telling you complete bullshit, and for a second there even I believed it. Trudy and Gilbert never threatened to withdraw the money. It was all Stan's idea. Jeff is never going to record on the album. What? I can't tell him the truth, otherwise I'll lose my job. They're coming up from humble beginnings, so here they are, the local guy Spud Monkey, with eyes on me. Oh my god! Oh my god, oh my god, oh my god! What? 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 Yes! Oh. I'm gonna call Alex. and Jeff, thanks for joining us. Now, first of all, your name, Spud Monkey. It's a strange name. Tell us what it means. We coined the word Spud Monkey to represent humanity's reverse evolution from primate to couch potato. <laughs> Can't believe you said that one. 
We're in this world of mass-produced pop. You two guys seem to be mates who've made it. Tell us what that feels like. We're pretty happy with the way things are turning out at the moment. Yeah. Unfortunately, I've become the sex object. I go to women, I mention sex, and they object. number six in the charts this week. I think we can safely say that all eyes will be on them for quite a while. <laughs> he's the spider on the monkey. I mean, he's the pretty one, so, you know, I've got to be the funny one. This next song's The Village People. <laughs> Jeff, you had considerable involvement in the music video. Sure, I concede the idea, but I am a drummer. First. Single Eyes on Me has gone to number one. We are Spud Monkey and you are watching... <laughs> Tonight, Spud Monkey will be here at the City Hall Auditorium to entertain a few thousand guests. Guys! OK, here's the thing. We've decided to add a couple of session musos to give it a bit more extra stage presence. Are you All serious? Right? What if they're no good? They'll make us look like dicks. OK, Jeff, Alex, this is Matt and Carly. Okay, I'll leave you guys to, um, all right. So how did you guys learn our stuff? Uh, we didn't learn anything, we mime it like you. <laughs> Great, we're on tour with Millie Vanilli. For your information, I don't mime. I mean, there is sequence stuff when we play, yes, but when I play, I don't fake it. Let's rock! All right. So basically, we couldn't have done it without Naomi. She didn't tell Jeff anything, all right? He still thinks he's going to be playing on all the future recordings, but in actual fact, we're just keeping him around for marketing purposes. <laughs> Alex, I've got to talk to you urgently.
It's my shoulder. First aid room? What the fuck is he doing in there? Hey, you'll do fine without him. I'm not going back on without Jeff, right? What, you're going to miss your first encore and disappoint your fans? I'll tear the place apart. Alex, you're a star. Come on. You want more? All right, let's do it. You knew all along, didn't you? What? I overheard Stan explain how I'll never drum on future recordings, how I'm just being used for marketing purposes. And Naomi here has been our minister for propaganda. So that given that you two are so close these days, I'm assuming that she let you in on a little secret. Well, am I right? Yeah, you're right. Jeff, please... Jeff! Don't talk to me. Jeff, it's not what you think. Naomi was forced oh, to go along with sure. the whole thing. Go ahead and defend the moral pygmy. No doubt you've been brainwashed into believing I am redundant and that she was just following orders. Well, so are Hitler's fucking henchmen. Jesus, Alex, I thought we were friends. And you had to go and think with your dick. You're a real disappointment. You're telling me that you think I'm a piece of shit? Yeah. Guess I am. Well, go on. Say it. What? Go on. Say it. You say it. Alex, you're a real piece of shit. You go on, you say it. I quit. I'm going to join Elena's box. Shit! I got all the trouble promoting him as a bloody video artist. And you two as mates. Stupid fucking drummer! Jesus. I've got to get out of this business. That's sounding pretty cool, but I have a suggestion. Sure. Can we try it in 6 8? Yeah, okay, cool. Sure. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six. You, you cry, face and regret. My childhood, bleeding to death, dreaming of even some of the day. Nothing is left to say. Yeah, cool, Jeff. That was sounding good, eh? Cool. Well, we should go for a drink later. Yeah, I'm up for it. Hello, Jeff here. Oh, hi, Jeffrey. Hi, Mum. Look, I'm rehearsing with my new band. Um, can I call you back later? Sure. It's just that Grandpa's thinking it'd be nice if you came over soon. Chuck, us one. Hey, did I mention I saw the bus driver? Yeah, OK. I'll, I'll try and make it over soon. I've really got to go. OK. OK. Bye. Sorry, Jeff. Help yourself, mate. Oh, thanks. You know, I can see what Terry meant about that bus driver. 
He just exudes desperation, eh? Terry was the drummer before you. Oh, he was the guy who went to Tibet to find it himself? Yeah, that's the one. Was he just over the music scene? I think the ultimate catalyst for him was when Dave got run over by the bus. Oh, that's terrible. Was Dave his son? No, no, his dog. Oh. Well, I'm sure Tibet cheered him up a little. He, he probably learnt that Dave was going to be reincarnated as a lovable kitten. Yeah, we've all tried to be optimistic, but that bloody bus driver, he makes it hard, eh? He's suing Terry for emotional damages. Serious? Yeah. Well, it could have been worse. Uh, at least no people were killed. <laughs> well, actually, Terry's girlfriend did commit suicide. Yeah, she had emotional problems a whole life, the poor girl, and this just finally tipped her over the edge. Oh, God. Well, at least she's at peace now. Yeah, well, that's more than we can say about his mum. She's dying of asbestos poisoning. She'll be dead within the month. Don't get daunted. If you think, oh my God, I'm about to record a whole album, of course you'll get freaked. But if you think, okay, I'm gonna record one song, then another one, you'll cope. I don't know. It's different when Jeff was here, there was a good vibe. Now it's dead. <laughs> I understand why solo artists suck so much. <laughs> when they leave the band behind, there's no atmosphere. Well, maybe we should create a little atmosphere ourselves. So what's wrong? This. This whole thing, it's not working. Yeah, you're probably still readjusting to going solo. <laughs> I don't mean the music. Are you breaking up with me? Oh, so that's it then. You've had your fun, now you're through with me. Simple as that. It's not as simple as that. Look, if you think I just used you for sex, okay, you're wrong. Look, if I wanted to get laid, I could throw myself at every pimply 16-year-old who wanted to have a go. But now with me out of your hair, you don't need to feel guilty. Look, Naomi, it was good, okay? We had some fun, but everything's changed. It's all different for me now. Fine. Run away. Don't face up to yourself. I'm better off without your oversized ego anyway. Stupid bloody machine. Excuse me, you're Alex, aren't you? We're big spud monkey fans. Excuse me, mate. Mate, I just put a dollar in and the, the can didn't come out. Hey, you're that guy from Spud Monkey, aren't you? I'm in a bit of a hurry at the moment. I... Yeah, I can see you got to get back to the hotel with your little fan club here and... Hey? <laughs> mate, it's a pleasure to meet you. I love your music. You've, you've got a really good voice. I know you. Really? Yeah. You heckled me when I was busking. If I remember rightly, you called me a poofter? No, no. A bit homophobic, are you, mate? Got a few repressed gay fantasies? I, I think you're thinking of someone else. No, I never forget a heckler. Incidentally, that spud monkey music that you like so much is exactly the same stuff that I was playing when I was busking. You hated it then but now you love it. You're a sheep. You're a mindless fucking sheep. So why don't you do the world a favour? And go and suck some cock. <laughs> Is brew. <laughs> cool name, huh? How come we didn't think of that? Because we're not fuckheads. Yeah, that could be it. So you think Stan's jealous of us? I think Stan's jealous of anyone with talent. The guy's a frustrated muso, it's obvious. And somehow drum machines are his revenge. I reckon uh, Stan won't be happy until 
drum machines and computers have taken over everything and they're singing and dancing and puncing around on stage. Yeah, I'm sure no one will mind until they're beneath a stage diving 21 inch monitor. Yeah. Look, Jeff, fuck all this small talk. There's a spud monkey gig on Saturday and I, it would really mean a lot to me if you were there. Why should I? What's, everything's different now. The vibe in the studio is gone and I can't... So you want me back because you can't cope with recording by yourself? No, that's, it's not just that. It's, look, I want you back... I want you back because you... You lied to me before. Why should I trust you now? Yeah, yeah, you're right. Yeah, why should you? Hey guys. Hey Jeff. Ready to hit the zoo bar tonight for a few quiet ones? Or well, loud ones as the case may be. Why so gloomy? Who died? Well, actually, Terry's mum died. Oh. Oh, that's sad. Well, is it easy to get a message to Tibet? Hey guys, I've got an idea. Let's do it in 5-8 instead of 6-8. Uh, Terry, this is Jeff. Uh, Jeff, this is Terry. Well, I guess I'll be hitting the zoo bar alone tonight. Give up. If a bunch of fat guys pretending to be the Beastie Boys can make it, and Alex does fine all by himself, then that's it. Even if I'm... Bloody thing! Hey, it's okay, we can get another one. See, it's not actually a can opener, it's a test of strength and courage. It was a piece of shit, is what it is. And it's probably made by a kid in Taiwan who gets whipped if she doesn't make a couple of hundred a day. You want to tell me what's wrong? This is dumped me for a young liberal with a penis. Oh, God, she is a born-again breeder. So now not only does she hang out with dicks, she sucks dicks as well. Oh, Kathy. Don't you worry. There are plenty of left-wing dickless fish in the sea. So what were you going to say about Alex? Oh, don't worry. Now's not the time for one of your catchy phrases that puts life into perspective. It's just stuff I read in books written by older, wiser people. Oh, I'm gonna go get a refund on this stupid thing. Hey, Kath. Hmm? Everything happens for a reason, remember? Thanks, Jeff. Maybe you can donate the money to charity. No, I think I'll go buy a big greasy burger. Oh, I'll, I'll make you one. Thanks, Jeff, but you burn cereal. Hello. Oh, hi, Jeffrey. Grandpa's sick. Grandpa? Jeffrey. <laughs> How's life treating my number one grandson? Uh, okay. I, I thought you were sick. He is. It's the perfect time to do a spot of boat renovating. <laughs> we can't talk any sense into him, Jeff. Maybe you can. I don't know. Grandpa's capable of making up his own mind. It's a beautiful day. We should go on a picnic. Well, the doctor said you should be in bed. If you're giving me my last rights, I want to be bungee jumping. You're not making any sense. Come on, let's go. He's making perfect sense. He's worried he's going to spend his last hours on Earth wrapped in an electric blanket. Jeffrey. Well, you should take a lesson from Grandpa, Mum. You waste four hours a day in front of the TV. Are you all right, Jeffrey? You can tell us, Jeffy. Have you still got that job going at your work, Dad? There's another coming up. Why? Because I'm giving up drumming. What? Everything's gone to shit. Helena's box have got their new drummer back, and Alex... Well, I'm not playing with him either. It's all too hard. All my friends think you're cool. Well, you know, because you're in the band and everything. Thanks, Dan. But I've given it a good shot for years now, and it's time I realised it's over. I'm going to lead a normal life of watching footy and throwing barbecues on the weekends. Jeff, you do whatever makes you happy. 
Yes, you listen to your father, Jeffy. We'll support you, whatever you decide to do. Don't worry, Jeff. When I was your age, I had a wireless rental business that went broke because some rascal invented television. But I soon got over it because I had my friends and family for support. Stick with your mates, Jeff, and you'll be fine. Hello? Hi, Jeff. It's, um, Naomi. Hi. Look, Jeff, I know I'm not your favourite person, and I can understand that, but I need your help to find Alex. Find Alex? There's a live TV spot scheduled for Spud Monkey very shortly at the 10th studio at Mancusa. Alex was due on set hours ago, but he hasn't shown, and I've exhausted my options. Have you got any idea where he might be? Jeff? Are you there? I'll think about it. Sorry to intrude. I would have knocked, but... Did you see that nature show on the ABC the other night? Apparently, when a male gorilla mates with a female who's previously bred, kills the offspring to purify the gene pool. That's very interesting. I did not know that. Did your stepdad try his hand at gene pool purification? Come home from school and mum would say, Alex, show Derek what you did at school today. And in front of her he'd go, oh, that's very good. You're very clever, Alex. And she left the room. He'd say, this is fucked. You're a useless piece of shit. I made detailed plans of how I kill him. Pages of this stuff. <laughs> Derek trips on invisible wire, falls downstairs, breaks leg. <laughs> Derek gets crushed by falling piano. Derek dies. He turned me into such a morbid little prick. M maybe if you hadn't written so much then, you wouldn't be such a good writer now. Yeah. With a stable upbringing, I'd be an accountant now, for sure. I mean, I wouldn't have my art, but I'd be happy. You make adding numbers up all day sound so appealing. So I suppose they sent you to talk me into playing tonight. No, I'm here because I want you to play. Yeah, well, nice thought. But I'm through with all this music industry. It's all bullshit. Listen, Alex. On the way over here, I was wondering how to convince you to play. I thought, what about the fans? You want to disappoint them, like when they saw the Phantom Menace? And then I thought, well, what about the promoter? The guy who worked his ass off to try and get the show on in the first place. But then I realised it all comes down to me. I know that sounds selfish, and it probably is, but... If you don't play today, in a year's time, you'll be a manic depressive. I'll be picking a goldfish for my office. And we'll probably just drift apart. And I don't want that. You're my best friend, Alex. And I fucking hate goldfish.
If we don't leave now, we'll never get there on time. I'm gonna go. And I really like it if you come along. You ready to drum today? Shit, yeah. Well, you better drive bloody fast. Never fear. I've delivered pizzas. <laughs> I have a feeling he'll turn up. He, he said he'd think about it, and then he turned his mobile up. What the fuck are you doing? I said no fucking drum! I said no fucking drum! Do you people have brains of cheese? I've got to get out of this fucking business. Listen, Jeff, about Naomi. Hey, it's cool. I got over her once. Second time ought to be a piece of piss. Get off my tail, ass pirate! Chill, Jeff. We're all driving for the same team, remember? Oh, yeah. Like bees. caught him trying to steal my wallet. Well, go on, grab him! Grab him! Ah, you get around Nick and stuff, eh? No, no, I haven't stolen anything. This guy's a paranoid psycho! I'll just keep you here at the cops, all right? I haven't stolen anything. I'm in the band. Yeah, and I'm Gary Glitter. Hey, 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 what are you picking those drums up for? I never told you to do that. Jeez, fucking roadies. Alex, good idea to get Jeff play drums, hey? Be great for stage presence. Yeah, well, where is he? Uh, yeah, well, I saw him before and uh, we feeling a little bit sick. Nerves or something. Huh? I'll go and check. No, 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 no. It's okay. I'll go. You got a sound check, all right? Yeah, and get your gear on, all right? Hey. Hey. We don't need the drum machine. Jeff's playing. We don't need the Backstreet Boys here either. Look, mate, uh, Jeff's really crook. What? You're gonna have to play with Eddie. Okay, let's get ready. We're on scene. I'm not that stupid, all right? I'm going up there and hey, I'll find hey, out what's hey, going on. You're not going anywhere. We're on scene, all right? Either Jeff plays or I don't. Oh, that's right. Hey, Gene. Hey, security! Shall we tell Stan all we know about the witch's brew? Uh, just testing your hearing, mate. Seems pretty keen. <laughs> what else do you know? Oh, we've done our research. There was the big 80s sound, the dreams of fame, <laughs> songs were crap. Look, I made you two. All right, and without me, you'd be as popular as syphilis. Stan, everybody has dreams. Some come true and some don't. 
But to punish others for your failure is really... fucked. Alex, get on stage. Security! Hey, security! Which one's the uh, drum machine, mate? This one, buddy. Great. Alex, think about it. Get out of my way, Naomi. Don't. You're doing the right thing, Naomi. You're right. I can't do this. It's a nice guitar. <laughs> Well, looks like you've just killed the drum machine. Yes. Yeah, but he's also killed the guitar effects. Let's play unplugged. Good call. Hand me that acoustic there. Okay, that's it. Show's over, gig's cancelled. Take this man outside, he's trespassing. <laughs> <laughs> what? We've just heard that Melancholy Baby by Urban Edge has gone to number one under a different label. You're fired. Bye, Stan. <laughs> no! No! You can't do this to me! You fuckers! Five, four, three. This song is called Down by the River. Down by the river, mud is silent lit by the light. Where from all I had to know. Come cries the river, holds you wonder and keeps you still. Water for my soul to grow. What did you see in your father's eyes that took you down? To the river. What did you see in your Jeff Brooks, rock star. <laughs> you know, I think now more than ever, I'm content with a simple title like Jeff Brooks.